everyone, welcome back. I thought I would end all this extra content in April with a 3D printed project. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interceptor Modeler. Well, I thought I would surprise a friend of mine with a 3D printed model of a Hypospray. He's a big Star Trek fan, uh, just like I am, and I thought it would be cool to create this for him. So, um, I'm actually already kind of uh, started with the project. Uh, it just dawned on me to, to that I probably should go ahead and make a video of this for you guys just to kind of show you how things have come along with me with uh, 3D printing. So I did end up getting my Elegoo Mars printer, as you can see here. Uh, this is working so much better than the Kichi printer that I had uh, told you guys about. And so with this particular project, I was able to find this uh, file on Thingiverse. And this is, again, a replica. This is the file now of the hypospray that is seen on Next Generation, Voyager, and Deep Space Nine. All right, so let me show you the parts already now. What I've done is I've printed them and uh, have all the basic parts ready here. And I've already primed them with a filler primer. Let me just show you what they look like. So as you saw the file there, I ended up printing two uh, hypo sprays, one for myself and one for my friend Gary. And um, one of them is actually going to come out a little bit better than the other just by the way it printed. Unfortunately, uh, the one I'm going to keep for myself has a few more defects uh, on the model, but I'm able to overcome most of those with uh, squadron putty. So what happened was when I was detaching these pieces from the build plate and I did something that I typically don't do. I printed these flat as you saw in the uh, uh, screenshot of the print file and the problem with printing things flat is that there is a lot of adhesion to the the build plate which is what you want but uh, typically what you would do is leave a little spacing there to add some supports but I wanted to try to leave these as defect free as possible sometimes the supports uh, create some small defects that you have to deal with and so I decided to go ahead and print them flat and uh, and it worked out great you know you can see they for the most part printed well but when I was detaching these from the plate I ended up cracking them but uh, I used super glue to uh, glue back the parts that were cracked off and I've covered them with squadron putty. So you can see actually they, they turned out pretty well. Uh, if you look closely enough you'll see there are some surface defects which I'm going to work a little bit more on. But uh, also when this printed there was a part here that uh, there was a tiny little hole. This is actually going to be covered with some pinstriping so you're not going to see that so I'm not too worried about that. But uh, Gary's, on the other hand, printed out perfectly, so no problems with this side here. And then you can see they're just basic shapes uh, that were easy to print on the 3D printer, and then these are the buttons here. So I'm going to give this a little bit more time to dry, and we're going to be painting these in the paint scheme of the Next Generation Hyposprays. So the paint schemes now for the Next Generation Hyposprays are pretty basic. They're just different shades of gray, a light and a dark gray. Um, and this is another picture of one here. And here is a screenshot from the TV show. As opposed to the ones from Voyager, the body tends to be blue instead. So it should be pretty simple to paint these. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this is how it's looking so far. I decided to add just a tiny bit of black and a bit of brown into the dark gray here that I'm using for this. I started out with neutral gray and I think it turned out pretty well. I also uh, light misted a gloss coat just to protect the paint here now and what's next are to work with the nozzle. So I think I'm going to paint these black first before applying the brass color. Okay making some nice progress here. Uh, everything else is dry. I just finished spray painting the nozzles and this was done with a combination of these two colors because uh, any of them themselves, this would have been too dark, this would have been too bright. So um, the two together makes for a nice combination. So I'm just giving this time to dry now and then I'll put everything together.
while the hypo sprays are drying, uh, I created this uh, decal sheet here for use with these buttons. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply them now onto the buttons now. As usual, any of my subscribers, if you uh, email me and request a copy of this, you're more than welcome to it. Uh, just do so at interstellarmoiler at gmail.com. Well, I decided to go ahead and glue the buttons on, and I'm going to give it one final misting of a gloss coat, and then I'll apply these decals. So, I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll show you the completed project in just a second. Okay guys, well here we now have the completed project. These two Star Trek hyposprays stand at five and a quarter inches from top to bottom. Not sure how that measures up to the original prop, but when they're held, they do seem to be the proper size. I found the file for this project and at Thingiverse by designer Nerd Trademark. Uh, I will post the link in my description below. And if you decide to print this yourself, again, bear in mind that the author does recommend printing this at 1,000% of the size that is pulled up in Cheaterbox. Since I'm not familiar with designing things in 3D, I'm not sure why this couldn't be sized accordingly from the start. But once this is done, the print comes out just like you see here. So I counted four different files of this version of the hyperspray, but as you can see here, there are files available for other versions, including the one seen in the original series, as well as one seen in the recent Picard show. All of these files are free, and many come as one piece, but this one, as you saw, is printed with separate pieces. And I've learned that you can certainly print many things as one piece. The varying contour of many subjects, however, can make it challenging when placing supports, and this in turn can affect the success of your print. With separate pieces, you're only concerned with just one part at a time. Now, I still am waiting on two glass vials, which of course will represent the medication being injected by the hypospray. Uh, the vial that you see pictured here is too small for this model. It's the one that comes with the hypospray that I currently have in my collection, which is actually a little smaller than this model. But I thought I would show you this just to give you an idea of what the completed prop would look like. This uh, model does take vials that are 20 millimeters in diameter, and there are a couple possibilities for you. The author of the file suggests using cigar glass holders, but you'll have to cut them because they'd be a bit too long. If you want to avoid this, another possibility are perfume glass vials, which you can find online, but you will be having to buy more than just two. They're not expensive. They range anywhere from $10 on up. I actually do plan on buying some, and we'll fill them with different liquids, at least a few of them anyway, to uh, display with the hypospray. Uh, as for the extras, maybe I can find an alternate use. And lastly, the stickers for the buttons worked out perfectly. I did apply a gloss coat to them as well, which hopefully will protect them better uh, against wear. And again, I just want to mention that if you are a subscriber here and you're interested in uh, printing this project and you want to get a hold of those stickers, just email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. As long as you're subscribed to the channel, you'll go ahead and get a free copy of it. I'll provide a PDF and a JPEG file for you that you can use to print them on any software that's used for printing photographs. All right, well, that is a wrap for this project, as well as all the added content that I put on the channel for this month. Thank you again for all the positive comments uh, that you guys have left on the channel recently. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I did it to uh, help out with, you know, being a little distraction anyway for you uh, as we went through this uh, lockdown in April, and hopefully May will see some relief. I sure, I sure hope so. As for 3D printing, a lot more in store. Very pleased with the way this uh, turned out. We got some nice replicas of some hypo sprays here. A simple project to print and a quick one to do. Uh, gave me a chance to test some of the things I've learned with 3D printing so far. And uh, so definitely look forward to more projects for 3D printing. The Elgo Mars seems to be working out really well. I'm not surprised because I've seen so many people be successful with it. Uh, particularly Ken Spriggs, um, who I've corresponded a lot recently. Uh, he's done such a... a, a phenomenal job with 3D printing. He's got a lot of stuff in store for you guys there on his channel, so so definitely uh, keep a lookout for what he's got planned there. As for future projects here, um, I mentioned in my last video I'm going to go now down to the uh, to posting the uh, content on my channel uh, down to my regular schedule. So coming up here I've got the Bandai Star Destroyer um, and following that will be the uh, pod from Predator that I got from Blackheart, and also in the future will be uh, the 172 scale eagle, so I look forward to that as well. So feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler.gmail.com if you have any questions about this particular project. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Please stay safe and healthy, and take care. <laughs>